My name is Diana, and this happened to me when I was very young. I was at Cedar Point, which is an amusement park on the Lake Erie Peninsula in Sandusky, Ohio. It was during a family vacation with my mom, dad, and younger brother Blaine, who was five years old at the time. I don't remember the exact date of this incident, but I recall it was springtime, and we were on the second night of our three-day, two-night stay. We were visiting a family friend who was attending college in the area. I was asleep in one of the queen-sized beds with Blaine, while our parents were in the other bed. Suddenly, a piercing sound blared, and a pre-recorded voice announced, Fire! Leave immediately, in an almost robotic manner. The alarm repeated the same message, urging us to leave immediately. We leaped out of bed and ran out of our room. The alarm was agony for me due to my sensitive hearing, but I powered through. I should mention that I had an injury to my left leg, so I was limping quickly in my boot, with my dad helping me run. As we neared the elevators and the door that led downstairs to the exit, I saw a woman in her late twenties or early thirties panicking while trying to call the elevator. I stopped, tapping her back, and said loudly over the blaring alarm, Ma'am, ma'am, you can't use the elevator in a fire, or you'll get trapped. Go to the stairs. Hurry. She looked at me, then back at the elevator's closed doors, as if shocked by her own mistake that could have been fatal. She looked back at me, muttering a quick thank you before fleeing to the stairs. As we started for the stairs again, my bad leg gave out, and my dad and a burly-looking guy who had stopped offered to help. The man said, need help? I got her legs if you got her front. My dad agreed, and they basically carried me down the stairs like a piece of lumber. We got outside and into our car to wait out whatever was happening, and we heard Blaine start to wail in fear. Now. Blaine was very into this children's TV show called Teletubbies back then, and he had plushies of each of the main characters. But his favorite one of all time, for all the years he loved that show, was the red, female Teletubby named Poe. Everywhere Blaine went, Poe would go with him. Out of all four of his plush Teletubbies, she was his number one. So Blaine began to wail, Poe's still in there. Poe's still in there. She's going to burn up in the fire. I want Poe. I looked at him and smiled before pulling Poe from inside my bathrobe. You mean her? I asked him, showing him his precious friend. He instantly stopped crying, grabbed the plushie out of my hands, and began hugging it tight. I could then hear the pre-recorded voice lines of Poe talking through the plush body. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. When we went back to the hotel around 4.30 a.m., we overheard the manager say that the cause was a negligent employee not properly extinguishing a cigarette. Apparently, the still smoldering embers of the cigarette had caught something in the garbage can on fire, which had started the chain of events. That employee faced some sort of punishment but I don't know what. I'm just happy that nobody died in the fire, or it didn't get any worse. Also, I was Blaine's hero for a month and a half for saving Poe, so I guess all's well that ends well. But to the employee that almost caused a serious fire for not properly disposing of the cigarette, I really hope that you quit smoking, or at least that you dispose of it properly because you really caused a frightening night. Not just for me and my family, but for many others as well. As a preface, I would like to say this happened when I was a 13 to 14 year old girl. It also happened in a country in Southwestern Europe, my native country, although I don't live there. And it was in a city that wasn't my hometown, but that both my mom and I are familiar with. 
I'm going to do a little context dump here so that it's clearer of what's going on. My mother used to travel a lot for work when she was young, as she worked selling products all over the country. As a result, she often stayed in certain towns more than once and always went to the same hotels. We aren't particularly well off now, but back in the day, she was much poorer, so she stayed in hotels that nowadays could be deemed rather dodgy. The hotel mentioned in the story is one of these aforementioned dodgy hotels. On this particular day, we had been driving all day to get to an airport to go back to the country that my mother and I live in. This airport was very far away from our house in my home country. The reason we chose to travel so far was because the expenses ended up being cheaper than if we traveled from the airport near our house. We drove all day, and my mom decided that we should stop in a town located several kilometers from a famous tourist spot, a town that she had often stayed in when she traveled for work. It was actually also quite a popular spot with the locals and the tourists who wandered astray. We went to the hotel she always used to stay in. And when we went to our room, we saw there was a large window on the wall adjacent to the beds with a balcony that connected every room on that side of the building on that floor. On the balcony between the rooms, there was a descended the stairs for a little while, looking for the number four on the wall or the letter L, indicating the lobby. I passed floor five, ready to find a door to the lobby. As I reached floor four, I noticed an eerie silence. The usual sounds of people chatting or footsteps were absent. It felt oddly deserted. I continued down, feeling a sense of unease creeping over me. The air seemed heavier, and a chill ran down my spine. As I descended further, the staircase started to feel endless, stretching out into the darkness below. Finally, I reached floor three, but there was no sign of the lobby. Confusion set in. Had I missed a turn somewhere? I retraced my steps, going back up to floor four. But still, there was no indication of the lobby. Panic began to rise within me. I quickened my pace, taking the steps two at a time. But no matter how fast I moved, the staircase seemed to go on forever. Then, just as suddenly as it had started, the silence was shattered by a low, guttural moan echoing through the stairwell. My heart pounded in my chest as I froze in terror, straining to locate the source of the sound. That's when I saw it, a figure lurking in the shadows at the bottom of the stairs. It was humanoid in shape, but twisted and contorted its features obscured by darkness. Fear seized me, and instinct took over as I turned and bolted back up the stairs, taking them three at a time now. Adrenaline surged through my veins, propelling me upward as I raced against the unknown horror below. Finally, after what felt like an eternity, I burst through the door onto the seventh floor. Gasping for breath, I stumbled down the hallway, desperate to put as much distance between myself and whatever lurked in the depths below. As I reached my room, I slammed the door shut behind me, leaning against it as I tried to steady my ragged breaths. My mind raced with questions. But one thing was clear. Something was seriously wrong in that hotel, and I needed to get my family out of there before it was too late. It took about two more flights of steps before realizing that there hadn't been a door for the fourth floor, nor had there been doors for the second or third. At this point, I probably should have turned back, but I continued down because I was tired and didn't want to climb back up. 
there were some weird side hallways that went into pitch black areas with a bunch of piping and wiring. And though I was curious to explore, I passed them by. I quickly hit the bottom floor, a dimly lit, cold room with cinder block walls and concrete floors. In front of me were a set of double doors. I hesitated at first, but I assumed that this was just another way back to the lobby. So I opened them and entered. Behind the doors was a massive warehouse type room, probably the size of a smaller basketball stadium. The only light came from the stairwell behind me, so I wasn't able to see much. Stacks of stairs were covered in plastic wrap. Tables lined the walls. And in the distance, I thought I could see boxes stacked against the wall as well. It was probably the storage room for the hotel. I looked around and saw an elevator in the back of the room, so I made my way towards it. I closed the door to the stairwell and began to walk in the dim light. The room was super muggy and dusty, and it seemed like nobody had been down there in a long time. As I got closer to the elevator, I noticed it was a little bigger than the elevators in the lobby and other floors. I pressed the up button, but I got no response. There was also a card swiper next to the button, likely for employees only, I thought. I then turned back towards the stairwell doors, making my way past the chairs and tables along the wall. When I got to the door, I gave it a tug, locked, of course. This is when things started to hit me, and I realized I was stuck in the dark, dusty basement of a hotel. I didn't have a phone because my parents wouldn't let me get one until I graduated middle school, so I couldn't call anyone. Everyone likely assumed I was still asleep in the room, so I began to freak out, believing that nobody was going to look for me. I searched around the warehouse, looking for other ways out. Some areas of the place were better lit than others, so I looked around in areas I could see first before starting on the darker side of the room. There was one other set of doors that I found, but it happened to be locked as well. I began to cry, scared that nobody would ever find me in this basement. It felt like hours, but I think only a handful of minutes passed before I heard the door creak open. It wasn't the door from the stairwell. Rather, it was the second door that I'd found. A slim, middle-aged man in a lab coat came out of the doors. Now, if this were 21-year-old me seeing this man, I would be very confused as to why this guy was wearing a lab coat in a hotel. But I was only 12 or 13 at the time. So I was immediately relieved at the sight of an adult who looked smart. I approached him, tears in my eyes, and he immediately looked surprised to see me. As you'd expect. Hey, what are you doing down here? He yelled. I got lost on my way down to the lobby and I've been locked in here. Do you have a key? I asked, shaking, eager to get the hell out of there. He didn't answer my question and instead just said, yeah, I know a way out of here. Follow me. He began to walk towards the doors with the stairwell and I followed relieved that someone had finally come to save me. We approached the doors, and I began to reach for the handle, but he continued walking. Isn't it right here? I asked him. I'll never forget the look on his face when I said that. He looked nervous, and though it was dim, I could see sweat glistening from his forehead behind his glasses. No, it's this way, he said hastily. Still, I continued to follow him, but I was now nervous myself. We had passed the door to the stairs and were now headed towards a darker side of the basement, away from all of the elevators. He looked like he had no clue where he was leading me as he kept checking around him, almost as if he was taking in his surroundings for the first time. We turned around a corner and began towards the boxes, a dead end. 
I immediately froze, realizing that something was very, very wrong. This guy had no idea where he was going, nor did he appear to work at the hotel. Then, my voice shaking, I asked, Okay, where are we going? Basement led to some sort of maintenance area, and the man in the lab coat must have been a trespasser or someone with ill intentions who somehow gained access to the hotel. It's terrifying to think about what could have happened if the janitor hadn't intervened. I'm grateful that you were able to raise the alarm and that the janitor acted swiftly to ensure your safety. It's understandable that the memory of that day still haunts you, especially with so many unanswered questions about the stranger in the basement. If you ever feel comfortable doing so, you may consider reaching out to the hotel to see if they have any information about the incident or if they've taken steps to improve security since then. Sometimes, closure can be found by seeking answers. But ultimately, your safety and well-being are what matter most. I hope that sharing your story has provided some catharsis, and I'm here to listen if you ever need to talk about it further. Take care of yourself, and remember that you showed incredible courage in a frightening situation. Thank you for sharing your story. It's understandable that you may never fully understand the intentions of the man in the lab coat, but your quick thinking and bravery in calling for help undoubtedly saved you from a potentially dangerous situation. It's a chilling reminder of the importance of staying vigilant and trusting your instincts in unfamiliar situations. As you reflect on this experience, I hope you find peace and closure, knowing that you acted courageously and emerged safely from a frightening ordeal. Take care, and may you never encounter such a situation again. And thank you for sharing your story with others. It serves as a valuable reminder to always stay aware of our surroundings and trust our instincts. If you ever need support or someone to talk to about this experience, remember that there are people who care and are willing to listen. Stay safe and take care. In closing, let us remember the resilience displayed in facing the unknown and the strength found in raising our voices in times of uncertainty. Your story serves as a testament to the power of instinct quick thinking, reminding us to trust our gut and seek help when needed. As we navigate life's twists and turns, may we always remain vigilant and courageous, ready to confront whatever challenges come our way, and may the lessons learned from your experience guide us in staying safe and aware in all our journeys. Thank you for sharing your story and for reminding us of the importance of staying vigilant and trusting our instincts. Take care, stay safe, and may your future adventures be filled with courage and clarity.